Welcome back to the uh, lectures on chemistry and the introduction to molecular spectroscopy. So, the lecture will continue on the quantum mechanics that I introduced a little bit in the previous lecture, the summary of quantum results that we need to use. Uh, we started with the description on the hydrogen atom and wrote down the Schrodinger equation as all of this representing the total energy of the electron acting on the wave function psi e, which is a function of the three coordinates y e z e. So, this is the h psi is equal to e psi e x e y e z e. Okay. Now, hydrogen atom due to the specific property of the potential energy between the electron and the nucleus being spherically symmetric, that is it has the same value on a sphere of radius r on any part on the surface of the sphere. Uh, the standard method for solving the hydrogen atom problem is to use the spherical polar coordinate systems. So, one writes the wave functions in terms of the three polar coordinates or theta phi and obtains the solutions n. Now, remember this n when we complete this equation E n psi n or theta phi, n stands for a set of three quantum numbers namely a principal quantum number n, an azimuthal quantum number n and l and uh, a magnetic quantum number m. Three quantum numbers are there. Therefore, the wave function for the hydrogen atom is given by psi n l m or theta and phi and the eigenvalue for this for the electron of course depends only on the principal quantum number. Therefore, we have degeneracies for the wave function psi n l m or theta and phi. The standard practice is to solve the Schrodinger equation using method of separation of variables and the energies are obtained in that process as the familiar uh, expression that Niels Bohr also showed earlier using the Rydberg constant or h is the Rydberg constant and in terms of numbers experimentally as well as uh, theoretically the number is 109677 centimeter inverse. Please remember this is h c nu bar if you recall the first lecture it is a r h is a wave number and the energy is inversely proportional to the square of the quantum number. Particle in the box the energy is proportional to n square, harmonic oscillator the energy is proportional to n, the hydrogen atom energy is proportional to 1 by n square. So, quantum number dependencies are different for different models. Okay. The wave functions themselves are uh, written as a product of a radial and an angular orbital. Okay. Anyway, first E n, when n is 1, the energy corresponds to minus h c Rydberg constant and that is uh, in the electron volt, familiar electron volt, it is minus 13.6 electron volts for n equal to 1. Obviously, for n equal to 2 it is minus 13.6 divided by 4 and for n equal to 3 it is minus 13.6 divided by 9 etcetera until n goes to infinity this energy level is 0. So, if you look at the spectrum of the hydrogen atom in an energy scale if you do that. And if you write this as the 0, 
and this has the minus 13.6. Then the next energy, this is for n equal to 1, the next energy is one fourth of this, so roughly somewhere, this is about a half, so roughly here, n equal to 2, sorry, it is one fourth, therefore, uh, it is somewhere here. n equal to 2. And the next one is one ninth of this, so somewhere here n equal to 3. And you can see that the energy levels become very, very dense as you go along and the state of 0 is for infinitely large quantum numbers and when the electron is completely free from the nucleus. So, this is the wave function, this is the energy level picture and what about the wave function picture? The wave function picture leads to the familiar description in terms of the S, P, D, F type orbitals. In chemistry so far we have not needed the G orbitals, we have not discovered elements with sufficiently large atomic number which warrants a G orbital. And the wave function psi n l m or theta phi is expressed in terms of a radial function which depends on the quantum numbers n and l and is a function of the radial coordinate r and an angular function which is a function of the quantum numbers l and m and is dependent on the angles theta and phi and these are polar coordinates. Okay? You recall that x e is r sin theta cos phi on the spherical system, y e is r sin theta sin phi and z e is r cos theta. So, these are the theta phi or theta phi dependencies of the coordinates therefore, the wave function is expressed using that and you see that there is a radial part, you see that there is a radial part and then there is an angular part. The radial part R n L of R is multiply is expressed using log air polynomials and an exponential times an exponential of minus um, Z R by n where n is the principal quantum number and the angular part is described by spherical harmonics y l m theta phi. Therefore, psi n l m is the product of the 3, the product of the 2 or times y. Okay. What are the values for n? The mathematics tells us that n has the allowed values 1, 2, 3 all the way to infinity, l has the allowed values 0, 1, 2 up to n minus 1 for any given n and m has the values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 until plus minus l. So, there are 2 l plus 1 m values, there are n l values and n of course, can go from 1, 2, 3 to infinity. So, the typical wave function picture that comes out of this is when n l m and psi if we write and the energies and the labels that we have, then n is 1, l is 0, m is 0, this is r 1 0 of r y 0 0 of theta phi and the energy is minus 13.6 eV, this is the 1s orbital and when n is 2, you have l equal to 0 and l equal to 1. For l equal to 0, m is equal to 0 is the only allowed value or 
2 0 of or y 0 0 theta phi this is the L m and this is minus 13.6 by 4 E v this is the 2 s orbital it is actually angle independent 0 0 is square root of 1 by square root of 4 pi that is a number so it is independent of theta and phi. So, all those things which are angle independent so the theta phi independent they are called the s orbitals. When L is 1 m can be 1 0 or minus 1 and these are obviously written as r 2 1 y 1 1 or 2 1 y 1 0 or 2 1 y 1 minus 1 and these are usually called the 2 p orbitals. Both the 2 s and 2 p orbitals have the same energy because the energy depends only on the principal quantum number and therefore, you have 4 orbitals for n equal to 2 and likewise when you do n equal to 3 you have got 0, 1 and 2. 0 is the same as what is called the 3 s orbital, 1 is what is called the 3 p orbital and when L is 2 you have got 5 quantum numbers namely 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 for the m and there are 5 wave functions all of which both of the 0, 1 and I mean all the 3 9 functions together will have the same energy minus 13.6 by 9 E v and these 5 functions are called the 3 d orbitals. And the labels of the 3 d orbitals come from the specific features that you are familiar with the spherical harmonics. The probability distributions for the hydrogen atom is the last thing that I would like to write before we move on to the angular momentum. The probability issues are angular distribution is due to the y l m theta phi star y l m theta phi multiplied by sin theta d theta d phi. This is like the psi star psi d x in the case of angles you have sin theta d theta d phi come in as the angular element and in the case of radial probability the rest of it namely r n l of r star or n l of r r square d r. Remember that in the Cartesian space the coordinate uh, x e y e and z e for the electron can have values going from minus infinity to plus infinity for all three of them x e y e and z e. Therefore, this is the volume element that you must have d tau for the uh, probability distribution and for normalizing the wave function when you write psi n l m or theta phi psi star n l m and psi n l m or theta phi. The corresponding thing in the radial the in the spherical polar coordinate system that volume element d tau is given by d r r square and then you have d theta sin theta and d phi. So, this is obviously broken into a radial part, a radial part and an angular part star and an angular part and you see that the integral is separable it is a 3 fold triple integral and the triple integral is easily separated into an angular distribution and a radial distribution. So, these are some of the basic elements that you need to know in the model problems of uh, quantum mechanics which will keep coming again and again in the uh, spectroscopy and every other uh, area of theoretical chemistry. Now, the last thing that I want to do for this particular course relevant uh, 
and something that needs to be recapped is angular momentum. In fact, we have already touched upon angular momentum when we discussed the spherical harmonics. I mean, I did not tell you so, but we will see that in a minute. Okay. The rotational kinetic energy of a system moving around a point is given by the square of the angular momentum divided by its moment of inertia. And L angular momentum has the same dimension as h bar, has the same dimension as h, mass length square t to the minus 1. Classically, the angular momentum is the position vector r of the particle times p the momentum cross p or cross p this is the vector product and uh, L is uh, directed L is the axis for the L is perpendicular to the plane containing R and P the vector cross product. Therefore, that is a classical definition and in quantum mechanics when you replace the momentum by the corresponding derivative operator L becomes minus I h bar. 2y O x z unit vector and L is a vector. So, what you have is essentially L x the x component of the angular momentum, the y component L y of the angular momentum times y, the z component of the angular momentum times z and the square of the angular momentum L square is L dotted with itself and that is given by the quantity L x square plus L y square plus L z square. The components of the angular momentum L x are given by minus i h bar times that L y by minus i h bar times that and L z with the minus i h bar times that. Okay. So, these are operator representations for the angular momentum in quantum mechanics and they have this property namely L x does not commute with L y and the commutator of L x and L y is given by I h bar L z and likewise for cyclic uh, permutations namely L y L z is I h bar L x L z L x is I h bar L y. Okay. The square of the angular momentum operators and these uh, if you take them and any one of these components if you take the square of the angular momentum operator L square and its commutation with L x the answer is 0. L square commutes with all the three components L square L y is 0, L square L z is 0 and in spherical polar coordinates. In spherical polar coordinates the square of the angular momentum is given by minus h bar square 1 by sin theta dou by dou theta acting on sin theta dou by dou theta plus 1 by sin square theta dou square by dou phi square. And this is used in the solution of the hydrogen atom when you transform the hydrogen atom kinetic energy you would see that this term comes with a minus h bar square by 2 m with one term 
preceding that namely 1 by r square dou by dou r r square dou by dou r and then you have 1 by r square times everything the minus h bar square is outside therefore, you have 1 by r square sin theta dou by dou theta multiplied by this derivative and then you have 1 by r square sin square theta multiplied by that. Therefore, this comes straight from the spherical polar coordinate uh, representation of the angular momentum and the operator for the angular momentum L square. Therefore, immediately can be identified to have this y l m as the eigenvalue. L square on y l m theta phi will give you h bar square l into l plus 1 y l m theta phi l m theta phi. The operator L z if you again go through the algebra of the coordinate representation and transformation will come out with this form minus i h bar dou by dou phi the same as the phi here and this has L z on y L m theta phi the eigenvalue m h bar y L m theta phi. And uh, y l m is simultaneously eigen function of both l square and l z because the operators commute l z and l square commute. Therefore, mathematics tells us that it is possible to have the same eigen function for both of them, but with of course, different eigen values namely m h bar for L z and h bar square L into L plus 1 for the operator L square. And you remember Y L m of course, has limitation in the sense for any L there are 2 L plus 1 Y L m's starting from Y L l to Y L minus l. Therefore, there are 2 L plus 1 such functions, eigen functions for any angular momentum quantum number given by L. L is an integer. This is something that you are already familiar with, but if you recall the particle in a ring which is a one dimensional problem only phi is the coordinate and the kinetic energy is given by minus h bar square by 2 i d square by d phi square i is the moment of inertia of the particle moving on a ring moment of inertia. And the equation that one needs to solve for the particle in a ring is h psi is equal to E psi. This is the h, therefore, the differential equation that you need to solve is d square by d phi square plus 2 i e by h bar square psi of phi equal to 0. And note that the dimension of i e by h bar square dimension. If you look at it, I is the moment of inertia. So, it is mass times the length square. E is the energy which has the dimension mass into length square into time minus 2 and h bar square. H has the dimension of mass length square time to the minus 1 and it is a square. Therefore, I E by h bar square is dimensionless because you see everything cancels here m square cancels with this m square, l square l square cancels with this l 4 and so does t to the minus 2. Therefore, it is a dimensionless quantum number, dimensionless quantity. 
of course phi is an angle it is dimensionless therefore you can see any derivative involving phi should only be added to another dimensionless quantity. So units and dimensions are extremely important therefore what you see is that the solution to this equation turns out to be d square by d phi square plus a quantum number m whose square is included and then you have a psi m phi is equal to 0 and m has the values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on and you can immediately see that the energy which is given by the expression 2 i e by h bar square is equal to m square gives you energy is equal to h bar square m square by 2 i. Okay. This is for one dimension. For three dimensions or more than one dimensions you already have that. The this one for three dimensions you already have this result. The angular momentum square gives you the eigenvalues L into L plus 1 and you see that h bar square L into L plus 1 instead of h bar square m square. Therefore, if you have to do the same problem in three dimension from 1 to 3 you see that E L is given by h bar square L into L plus 1 by 2 i for the specific rotor for the overall square of the angular momentum and this is what we will see as an important quantity later when we study the diatomic molecular uh, spectroscopy, rotational spectroscopy and also when we study the rotational spectroscopy of a spherical top molecule you will see that the eigenvalues for the rotational energies will be a quantum number L into L plus 1 and the units are h bar square by 2 i i is the moment of inertia for the molecule in that case and therefore the relations that we have here should be recalled when we do the microwave spectroscopy and also when we do rho vibrational spectroscopy later. Okay. The eigenfunctions for rotational angular momentum are obviously given in the case of a one dimension it is easy to write that the eigenfunctions psi m or E to the plus or minus i m phi. That would be the solution for this equation namely d square by d phi square of psi m plus m square psi m is equal to 0 that would be the solution exponential of plus or minus i m phi. And a general solution psi for a particle in a one dimensional motion can be a linear combination of both namely a m e to the i m phi plus b minus m e to the minus i m phi. Okay. Just to indicate that there are two different constants and there is a linear combination of both the acceptable solutions and this is a degenerate solution because the energy depends on the square of m. So, it does not matter whether m is plus or minus the corresponding exponential i m phi will be the solution and both of which are different wave functions. So, for a particle uh, on a ring you have degeneracies for every m other than m equal to 0. So, these are important relations for understanding the role of angular momentum in rotations and also the coupling of rotations with molecular vibrations and so on. And therefore, please keep this in mind. Uh, I think I have come to the summary of whatever that minimally quantum mechanics we needed before we move on to understanding uh, elementary microwave and infrared spectroscopy. Therefore, anything else that we need I would uh, uh, provide that at that point of time. We will 
uh, continue this with uh, another important uh, result in uh, electronic spectroscopy for measurement quantitatively using what is known as the Beer Lambert's law. And then we move on to the first most important topic for spectroscopy, the Born Oppenheimer approximation. This week we will complete both of these and then we move on to the lectures on uh, the molecular uh, spectroscopic details for rotations and vibrations. Until then, thank you very much.